Demon. Totally. All right. Today is 10:30. 23. And we're going to learn about the distributive property. Distributive property. <clears throat> Last week was order of operations. This week is distributive property. Here's hoping I make it to the whole week. Yes. <coughs> All right, distributive property. Oh, it's perfect for Thanksgiving. I mean, not Thanksgiving, Halloween. So here I am. Here is my front door. And here are some trick-or-treaters. They're in disguise. All right. So, distributive property is like handing out candy to trick-or-treaters. So, I give candy to just the first person who shows up to my door. Is that fair? No, it's not fair. It's fair for me to give everyone who shows up to my door candy. So, I'm going to give candy to the first kid who showed up and asked for trick-or-treats. All right, Batman. And then the second person who knocks at my door, Catwoman, I don't know, a pumpkin, I don't know. They all get candy. Well, how much candy do they get? Five. Five. So this guy gets five times his costume, plus the second guy gets five times his costume. So everybody gets candy. Not just the first person who shows up, but both of the children who showed up to for uh, Halloween get candy. And we multiply. What would you give? King size chocolate bars. Oh. Yeah. All right. So, who knows? What is 5 times x? 5x. 5x. Squish it together. So, this is a multiplication sign. But we also should know that when they're squished together, it means multiplication. So 5 times x is written as 5x. And this means that. So, they, so when you see them together, it really means 5 times x. Plus, well, we don't squish these two together. We do this math. What's 5 times 2? 10. Now, can I put those two numbers together? I cannot. This is your answer. Because you don't know what X is. Why did he get more? It's, I like the costume better. Actually, you don't know which one got more, Gio. Because you don't know what X is. And I'm not telling you what X is. X could be 1. X could be 2. What if X is 2? Did one get more than the other? No, they each got the same. Because if X is 2... 2 times 5 is 10. ten, so they would be equivalent. But you don't know what x is. So we're going to start a, a unit of math where your answers are going to look like problems, like you're not done yet. But we're done. We are done. All right. So you went to the next house. So next house offered eight candies. To the first person who shows up and to the second person who shows up. So we're going to, it's even in the name, distribute, distributive property, distribute the candy. We're going to give the 8 to the 4, and we're going to give the 8 to the M. What is M? M is like X. It's just a variable. You don't know what the value is. I'm not going to tell you what the value is. We're just going to deal with it. All right. So it would be 8 times 4 plus 8 times M. What is 8 times 4? I can do 32 plus 8 times M? 8M. Good. Yay, algebra. 8M. 8 times 4, 32. 8 times M, 8M. And that's your final answer. We're okay? It's pretty easy. You'll do this in high school as well. The distributed property is one of the properties you'll use a lot. All right.
Um, is it the same thing with um, a minus? Um, yeah, the G. All right, what do we get? Yeah. So we distribute 10 times G minus 10 times 3. So 10G minus 30. We can leave it at subtraction right now until we do like another problem and we throw in more stuff. Then we can change it to keep change opposite if need be. All right. Um, ooh. It's getting towards the end of Halloween. I have only a few candies left. But all of a sudden, these middle school kids show up. And they all come together. And you're like, oh my God, so many middle school kids. And then you ask yourself, aren't they a little too old for trick or treat? No. He's never too old for free candy. Yeah, that I will confiscate on Wednesday if you bring it to class. Yeah, well, nothing like free candy, right? Yeah, go trick or treating. All right, so we got a lot of trick or treaters. Do they all still get candy? Yes, all of them, no matter how many people show up to your front door. You gotta give them all candy. Oh, oh. Wait, what about close it? Huh? What about just close it? The door? <laughs> Why'd you open it? Turn off the light, you know? Uh, all right, so this is true. Ooh, it's already 3N. What do you think I should write down as my work? Six. Two times what? Three N. Nice. Oh my God. Plus two times five plus two times W. So everybody gets a two. Everybody gets that piece of candy. Everybody gets a piece of two. What's your favorite candy? Some days it's Kit Kats. Some days it's Snickers. Oh my gosh, some days those paletas the mango with chili on it. Yeah. What else? Snickers, Kit Kat. Mango paletas. That's about it. All right. What's two times three in? Six n. Do not add. It is multiplication. Six n. Plus ten. Plus. Does it look hard? Yeah. Oh, good. Is it easy? Yeah, 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 it is. It just looks hard, and it looks intimidating. If, like, someone was to walk in right now and be, like, start taking your notes, they might be like, whoa, how did you do that? Now, in high school, and we can start it now, your final answer should be written in alphabetical order. And then the one without the variable goes at the very end. So how would I rewrite this answer to, to be literally 100% correct in algebra. Yeah. 6n plus 2w plus 10. This would be what your high school teacher will expect from you. In alphabetical order, and then with a single number at the end. Will I? Not really. But if you want to get into the habit of it, you could totally start today. Ooh, I like it. Let's do it. All right, it's close to midnight. All of a sudden, these high school kids show up. I'm like, man, you're way too old for this. Can 
and I'm like, dude, you guys, you guys are way too old to be trick or treating. Nah. And they're like, no. We're young at heart. Yeah, so am I. What did you guys get? Uh, 14B plus 78 plus 28 minus 14C. Okay. Ah, shocked myself. All right. So you give everyone a 7. You give everyone a 7. So 7 times 2B plus 7 times A plus 7 times 4D minus... 7 times 2C. So 14B plus 7A plus 28D minus 14C. Can we put any of these together? No. No, because they're all different letters. So we cannot put anything that has a different letter together. So this would be your answer. Would it be your answer in algebra? No. No, in algebra it would be in alphabetical order. So which one would I put first if it's in alphabetical order? 14B. But wait, what's special about 14C? Minus. Minus 14C plus 14, no, 28D. So you, ha would, you would have to carry that minus with the 14C. So that minus belongs to the 14C, so you would put it there. So if it if it's a, uh, is it in alphabetical order, yes, A, B, C, D. So in high school, that's how they want you to write it, in alphabetical order. And then they do something with the exponents as well. But we'll leave that to the high school teachers. Okay, one more example. Then the college kids showed up. And you're like, oh, well, they're college kids, so what are we going to give them? Seriously. Okay, what are we distributing that we're writing down? <laughs> what are we distributing? This one's a little different. You're distributing the M. M&M's. Yeah, you're distributing M&M's here. So here, everyone gets an M. One Everyone gets an M. One people, yeah. M times 2 plus M times A. So what is M times 2? Yes, very good. 2M. We always like to put the number in the front. Plus, what's M times A? My God. Ma. Ma. Yes and no. Yes, you would just push them together, right? M. But, remember the alphabetical oh, order part? A.M. 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 Now, Adrian, as seventh graders, am I okay with you writing M.A. pushed together? Yes. In high school, they want you to put it in alphabetical order, Okay. Uh, am I okay if you write M-A? Yes. Now, we can multiply variables together, but we can't add them. So I can't put these two together because this one does not have an A, and this one does. So they're different. This would be your final answer. Are we okay? Easy enough? All right.
Okay.